a decade ago, you were definitely one of the first people to call out that science wasn't progressing as fast as it had in the past. How has that paired in the last 10 years since since you've kind of been famous for making those statements? Yeah, I think I, st- I started uh, talking about the tech stagnation probably around two, 2008. Uh, and okay, so even and earlier. The, and, the, and the claim is that it's been uh, it's been it's been slow for uh, at this point running on five decades since, since really since the 1970s that we've had uh, limited innovation in the world of atoms. Um, you know, when I was an undergraduate at Stanford in the late 1980s, uh, it was a mistake to major in anything having to do with atoms, mechanical engineering, chemical engineering, nuclear engineering, aerosol were just terrible decisions. And then the, the only thing that really worked were, uh, were, were uh, the world of bits, computers, internet, mobile internet, software. Um, you know, to some extent, electrical engineering was still okay, but but really computer science was, was the one place where uh, there continued to be this uh, cone of progress yep. around computers. And then we can debate, you know, how big that was. It, it certainly was very, very unba- unbalanced. And uh, it certainly, um, you know, I think it, it led to some great companies. It's uh, debatable how much it improved the GDP relative to um, to what, what you know, what we'd seen, say, in the first half of the 20th century in, in the United States or the other developed countries. So I, yeah, so I, bro- I broadly think that we've had this uh, broad uh, stagnation in technology and science for for something on the order of 50 years. Is the stagnation accelerating? Is the is it decelerating? And now there's a new wave. Like, how, where do you feel we are in that stagnation um, uh, continuum? You know, I I think I think in some ways we are roughly we are roughly in the same place we've we've been <clears throat> we've been um, for the last quarter century where it's um, it is. Uh, there's there's a decent amount of progress in the world of bits. Um, we had an enormous internet wave in the you know in the late '90s. Maybe maybe you know the late '90s were early. Maybe we're now late in the internet. But that was that was a giant uh, thing in, in in computers. And uh, and we now have you know the start of you know some sort of real AI wave. Even though it's been talked about you know some ways for decades. But I think uh, I think the LLMs, Chat GPT. You know, it's it's probably a breakthrough that's you know I would I would rank as on par with the internet itself. It's it is it is very big, and so I think I think in this world of computers, we we can say that uh, you know the, the the progress is continuing at you know in fits and starts, but you know at uh, at still a pretty uh, a pretty decent pace. And then um, it's everything else that's uh, been much slower, much harder to invest in you know, much harder for, uh, um, yeah, much, uh, much, much less than advertised and much further from the science fiction future of the Jetsons. You, you made an argument in your piece on the new criterion that kind of wokeness is that smokescreen for the lack of scientific progress. Can you unpack that a bit? Well, there's, a, there's a lot, uh, it was, it was sort of an anti-woke and anti-anti-woke argument I was making where, uh, where uh, you know, I think there are endless debates we can have about DEI, wokeness, political correctness, multiculturalism, all these topics. And on some level, I think they're important. You know, on some level, um, you know, uh, I would advocate for certain certain uh, certain views views on them. And I think the debates are important to have. And then on an, on another level, I, I I've come to worry that uh, so many of these debates are distractions. It's like a magic show where we're being hypnotized and we're paying attention to to it to a certain debate we're not seeing the the man in the orange monkey suit jumping on the back <laughs> of the plate, something like this and uh, and that uh, diversity is a diversion from more important things and the more important things can be questions of economics questions of science question of religion you know maybe even other other political issues you know the economics one just to rattle down the list real quick, <clears throat> the economics one is is just uh, you know cultural Marxism. Um, the, the Marxist critique of cultural Marxism is that it people took when they when they when they started focusing on race and gender, they forgot about class, they forgot about the real economics, and uh, and uh, and then this probably there's a Marxist or libertarian critique where you could say that uh, um, 
you know, um, we've had just runaway housing prices. And that's the that's the real problem. We should be figuring out how to build more affordable housing. And uh, and that um, and that as long as we're talking about the other categories, um, you know, we're not even going to be wrong, not even going to be in, in the zone of dealing with that problem. <clears throat> and and it used to be that like the downtrodden were agitating for maybe better wages or better working conditions. Um, now it seems like some of these movements are things about things that are other than economic. Could be some of these things you mentioned or the environment. Well, you know, is that is that also a smokescreen? Well, I don't know if it's you know I don't know how conspiratorial you would get. There's yeah, there's a Marxist conspiracy theory of history where it was yep. uh, wokeness was a conspiracy by the by the corporations to divide the workers into race and gender. And uh, pay them less, and I think there are, you know, I think there are various companies that, um, you know, executed on something like that plan, you know, moderately well. There's, you know, Walmart in the in the 2000s was in, always in the doghouse because it wasn't paying its workers enough, and they came up with the idea of rebranding themselves as a green corporation, and that sort of split the um, uh, the left wing anti Walmart alliance, and then in effect, um, it was cheaper to do a little bit of green stuff than to pay the workers more, and it was sort of a uh, was probably good for the Walmart shareholders, and uh, and and then was also, um, you know, in some ways uh, didn't uh, didn't really address some of these underlying economic challenges. And I, I think I suspect there's something like that that's also gone on with uh, with uh, the, the question of science has been has been very obscured, and uh, and so that the you know if, if you think of it in in the context of the universities or the schools, the wokeness tends to be focused on the derangements of the humanities curricula and uh, English or history or topics like that. Whereas, uh, whereas if the thing that's really wrong is that um, the scientists aren't uh, making any progress, they're not inventing new things, you know, it's, it's all sort of this uh, corrupt peer reviewed research, it's incrementalism, it's sort of a, uh, it's a stagnant Malthusian sociopathic institution. And, uh, and, and to the extent that the sciences are, the humanities are distracting us from the sciences, you know, we're not even paying attention to, you know, I, I'd be fine with a little bit of wokeness if we were finding a cure for dementia or doing other things like that. And, and is there, is there, is there some sort of structural reason why like science is not progressing fast enough? Is there something like we can, or is it just like all these 1% things that all add up? You know, the, I, I always think why questions are difficult. They're they're somewhat overdetermined. Um, uh, there there's, there certainly is there probably is some effect where certain fields have um, you know the easy things have been found and it's hard to find new things. It's probably very hard to find a new element on the periodic table. So it's you know, or it's hard to I don't know, you're not going to find be like Christopher Columbus and find a new continent on on this planet. So there, you know, certain certain fields get closed and get fully developed over time. Um, but I, I'm, um, but I'm on the whole more inclined to sort of cultural explanations that it's not that nature, um, has run out of things for us, but that there's something that's changed in our culture. That we've become too risk averse, that, uh, things have gotten bureaucratized, um, um, that, uh, you know, I, I, I think one, one, di one dimension that I, I, I do think is a fairly important one in the 20th century is that um, there was a great deal of science and technology that was used in this sort of um, in this sort of uh, military context. And, you know, at some point, you know, the scientists and the engineers are just building more powerful and more dangerous weapon systems. And, you know, already, I think World War One, it's all this carnage. It's, it's, it's sort of a ambiguous is all the science really um more good than bad for humanity and then certainly uh, 1945 with uh, los alamos and hiroshima it somehow um I, th I think tilts us into a somewhat somewhat darker direction and and uh there's there's something about the history of nuclear weapons where uh in, in my telling it it's a sort of delayed response it takes something like a quarter of a century for it to fully sink in but by 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 the early 1970s, it's like we can destroy the world 20 times over. What are we doing? Does this make any sense? And then, you know, maybe we shouldn't be funding the smartest physicists to build bigger bombs. Maybe we shouldn't be funding any of the scientists. Maybe they all need to be regulated. Um, and uh, and it's kind of sad for these people to be 
you know, puttering around with lots of grant applications and filling out all sorts of DEI forms. But uh, maybe that's the price you have to pay to stop them from blowing up the world. And it does seem like it, some of this correlates with just like the moon landing, like which is this like incredible feat. And then it just seems like things started to slow down, like right around that time. Um, is there is there something that is there something in the psyche like oh like it's kind of like mission accomplished like we can we can yeah, just now slow down the history is complicated there were a lot of things that happened but i think um i think there was um there it was possible to accelerate science and tech through centralization and government funding so even even the the manhattan project uh you know the the new york times editorial uh, a week after hiroshima was something like you know uh, hope you know, if you left this to prima donna scientists who are decentralized, uh, sort of an anti-libertarian argument, it would have taken them half a century to come up with a device. Instead, the army was just telling people what to do. It organized the scientists. And they, they, they were able to bring this invention in three and a half short years to the world. And then, um, and then in a way, you were able to repeat this sort of centralized, coordinated, you know, pouring in lots of money approach um, with, with the Apollo program. And, you know, uh, Kennedy, early 60s gives us the speech. And by the end of the decade, we, ha we have we have a man on the moon. Um, but then I think uh, the longer term cost was that you created these, these very large bureaucratic institutions, um, you no longer had the innovations that were coming in that you could then scale. And, uh, and somehow um, it became politicized and, and it, it, it slowed down a lot. So there was some, I don't know, I'm not sure Faustian bargain, but some kind of a trade-off between you could accelerate one time, but then uh, then you get a scientific, it's like in, like in agriculture, you can increase food production by having some some monoculture, but then over time, it's, uh, it's probably not the healthiest, um, not the healthiest ecosystem. When you're dealing with atoms, like there's a lot of safety problems. And if you think of you know, even do you think of early NASA, there's a lot of people that died. There's a lot of even test pilots on the sure. side doing stuff. Um, and it, is that like safetyism? Has that come into kind of slow innovation? Um, sure. I mean, it was, uh, you know, I think Yuri Gagarin, the, the first uh, the first uh, cosmonaut who circled the Earth uh, six, seven years, maybe a decade later, Died in some test fight, test pilot. So yeah, you know. So it's so the, the, yeah. There was a, there was a, there was sort of a crazy amount of 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 risk taking, and um, you know, without yeah, without making any judgments about it, I, I would I would say that uh, yeah, we there was, there was something that shifted away from that. It it, it just felt too dangerous, and um, it was too much risk. Of nuclear war, it was too much risk of environmental degradation. Uh, there were just too many crazy things people people felt uh, could happen, and uh, I, I don't I don't I don't want to dismiss these existential risks, but I, I I do think that the trade off is that we've 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 you know resulted in a society that you know was locked down not just during COVID, but we've been in a soft lockdown for for something like fifty years, and uh, and my my bias is always we need to. And we need to find some way to get out of the lockdown. And how do you know when to like where to draw that line? Like if you think of like not long after some of the scientific progress started slowing, we you know we mandated seat belts and you know, and then you mandate you know bicycle helmets and then you mandate helmets when you're skiing and you know and, and so and um, you know in many ways like these things are good they protect people and stuff like that mm -hmm. so how do you know like where to how far to go there, there's some sort of like laugher curve of how far you go on the safetyism side right um yeah it's, it's always it's always hard it's 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 hard to articulate the you know the the, the kinds of places where it feels like we we've gone too far or where it's gotten high you know, it's sort of gotten hijacked by various rackets. Are I, I think we've gone too far on the safety side with real estate, where it's you know, it's runaway nimbyism, yep. extremely strict zoning laws. And I'm looking out of my window here in Los Angeles, and it's all these office buildings that were built in the you know 60s, 70s, maybe 1980s are the most recent buildings. I can't, you know, I I cannot see a single, I can't see a single crane anywhere on the horizon. It's just, and that's. That tells me we've gone way too far in something, you know, as relatively important as uh, 
as real estate. And then, and then I, I do think on the, you know, biomedical side, um, uh, on, which is, you know, an area that I've thought about a lot, you know, and always think, and it always strikes me, we could be doing so much more. There's, there's so many approaches that seem, seem quite promising. And, uh, and then, um, it is, uh, yeah, the, 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 the barriers are just very, very high. And, uh, I think we are, you know, we're scared of the things that can go wrong, but we're not scared enough of the things that will go wrong if we do nothing. 